Hello, gems. Welcome back to my channel. Leah from Red Emerald Yoga, and we are here with Stacey DeMarco's Wishcraft Oracle. We are going to be doing an unboxing and review. So let's get it out of this shrink wrap. I don't know why this has this sticker I got from Amazon. It just says new item on it. Hmm. Interesting. So I have this deck on pre-order and it arrived a while ago, but I have not been able to get around to opening it. So this is finally going to be the day. Mm, this is so tight. Let's see. Really don't want to damage the box. Okay, here we go. And the box is intact. <laughs> All right. So it's really pretty. It does have um, like a bling bling gold foiling here. And the little stars are bling bling. All of this gold. Really nice. It says, from blowing out candles to wishing on a shooting star, children and adults alike love making wishes. When doing wishcraft, be as clear as you can about your wish. Have fun, let go, celebrate, be creative. Finally, remember, you are the magic. These cards provide a fun activity for parents and children to share, and their simple, uplifting messages will inspire people of any age. So there's only 30 cards in here, but I thought this would be a fun deck for manifesting. So let's check it out. It's got these cute little stars on a a goldish background, kind of like a gold had a baby with a paper, brown paper bag. We have a simple little guidebook here. It is in color. It says everyone needs a little wishcraft and magic in their lives, especially kids. And pretty much everyone has already engaged in some wishcraft if they have celebrated their birthday by blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. Consider this. You think about a hopeful wish. You make that wish by blowing out the candles and then you keep the wish secret so the universe can make it so. Most of us are already very experienced. So here is your chance for more exploration into the ways of wishcraft. There are three key things to remember when doing wishcraft. The first is to be as clear as you can about your wish. Of course, it is okay if your wishes change over time. That is part of our growth in life. And feel free to make your wishes as big or as small as you want. Oh, there's more. <laughs> the second thing to remember is to have fun. Let go, celebrate, be creative, be in the moment. The third thing to remember is that you are the magic. Without you, without your unique energy in the world, the magic, the wishcraft cannot work. You are a fantastic piece of the magic puzzle. And without your power, the wishes cannot be sent out and become reality. So get out there and make that wishcraft happen. A special note for parents and guardians. So if you are doing this with your kids, it says... I suggest you read through each card in the Wishcraft Oracle deck before working through them with your child or children so you are aware of each activity and how much supervision it may require, such as when using candles. Note also that this isn't just for the children in your life. You can take part in every single piece of Wishcraft in this deck. So it goes into the magic starts here talks about the magic circle. It goes into how to use the cards. All right, and then it has just a short little description for each card. So these cards will probably be pretty easy to familiarize yourself with and begin to use them. So you can start to use them with or without the book. Oh, I will read about the author. It says, Stacey DeMarco, the modern witch, and one of Australia's most respected pagan practitioners, is passionate about bringing practical magic to everyone. 
She is the best-selling author of many books, annual, lunar, and seasonal diaries and oracle decks, including Queen of the Moon Oracle, the Elemental Oracle, the Universal Oracle, and Divine Animals Oracle. Stacy lives in Sydney, Australia, by the sea on a cliff with her husband, furry companions, and about 30,000 bees. <laughs> that is awesome. Learn more at www.themodernwitch.com or visit her Facebook or The Modern Witch on Instagram. Oh, it's Stacy DeMarco on, face on Facebook. This oracle deck is dedicated to Ginge. And the illustrator, Elizabeth Teeth, Thoff, I think that's how you say that, is a digital artist from the Midwest USA. She uses digital drawing and photo manipulation to make character and concept art. She is a lover of animals and fantasy, which is what her art is heavily inspired by. You can find Elizabeth on Instagram at weaving.light. Okay, let's see. All right, so it's just a plain backing with this little removable thing. And then I will probably, once I familiarize myself with the guidebook and don't need it anymore, I'll probably just keep my guidebook at the bottom so I don't have to have that jumbling back and forth. So that's kind of neat. Oh, and it actually fits perfectly just like that. So I do like that. All right. So we're just going to set this to the side for now. Let's see. Oh, these bands, the bands. See if we can get this off and hopefully these cards are not damaged. Let's see. I do like the hollow foil. That's really pretty. I'm trying to get it to pick up the light. Um, there it is. Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> okay, so let's check for damage from the band. I don't see any, so I'm really happy about that. Rockpool has been getting their stuff together and I love it. I love when I open the deck and it's just undamaged. And the other thing I'm really excited about are these corners. Um, these, I, so I would still say this is roundish, but it's not as roundish as Rockpool usually has. Usually they have a really hard defined, um, I guess, corner of the round circle. I don't know. So this is really subtle. It's, it's still roundish, but it's not, um, it's a lot more round. <laughs> so I like that. Hopefully they won't have any lifting from the gilding. Um, I wouldn't say that this is like the best quality cardstock. I don't expect these edges to hold up forever. They're not completely flat. They're like a little bit, um, I don't know, like textured almost. Right at the edge. So I'm just, I'm not picking on the deck. I'm just telling you what I honestly see. So that way, like you make an informed choice, you know, you know what to expect. And then when you order it, you're not surprised. And then you don't have to send your deck back because you know what you're getting into. Let me see. I'm trying to see if I can show that. You see what I mean? How it's just like a little bit not, maybe that's from the gilding. I'm not too sure, but that is noticeable. So I'm just pointing that out. I just tell you what I see in the deck. That's really cute. I like this box. He's so cute. I love the circle. The magic starts with me. That is a great reminder. The wishing tree. My wishes grow like a big tree. I like how these um, these things coming down. They kind of remind me of I don't even know I don't even know what they're called, but like oh tentacles. They remind me of tentacles, and it's just like going out into the universe. And they use the tentacles, you know, to like pull stuff in and feed it. So it's kind of like the wishing tree. Like you're feeding your wishes with your intentions or something. I don't know. That's really cool. Maybe they're ribbons. Maybe they're ribbons hanging from trees. The crown. I am a good leader. That is so cute.
Some of these are a little stuck together. Okay. Be an animal. I share my world with animals which have all kinds of strengths. That's so cute. Dance the rainbow. I love to have beauty in my life. Bubble power. My wishes float easily out into the world. This is one of the um, exercises that I do when I do yoga with kids. I'll often have some sort of like pranayama breathing practice and we'll blow bubbles to just so they can like really focus on like, you know, the exhaling. But I often tell them like to send their wishes and their, their hopes and their dreams out into the universe with their bubbles. And that's really cute. That's what that reminds me of. Hope jar. I am full of hope and I take action. Create a spiral. I am flowing with the seasons. That's really pretty. Build a fairy house. There is magic everywhere. Oh, I just realized that these cards have numbers. <laughs> I'm looking at my monitor while filming, so I didn't really get a really good look at the card. That's so funny. So there are numbers there. <laughs> let the leaves go. I can let go of what I no longer need. I love it. I love it. It's just like spinning into a vortex, just like taking it. And then like as it's taking it, I always say it creates an energetic vortex for something else to come in and be brought in. That's awesome. Time capsule. I have the confidence to be myself. Love your body. I love my body. Bake magic cookies. I can give good things to myself and others. Yes, I had my son's friend's older sister came to me and she asked, why, why are my cookies always flat? I make cookies and they never rise. She could not figure out how she could not make a basic recipe, you know, come out. And it was like a tried and tested recipe. Everybody loved it online. And I told her that I think that she was too smart and she was coming at her baking with um, like an analytical mind. And she was only following the recipe. And I asked her if she was putting love in the cookies and she didn't understand the question. She didn't know what I was talking about. And I asked her if she sang and she danced while she was doing, making the cookies. And she said, no. And I said, that's your problem. I told her, you have to sing and you have to dance while you're putting your love and your intentions into the recipe. And um, you have to put it into the oven with love and then they'll rise. <laughs> and she thought that was the stupidest thing she had ever heard. And I told her she needed to make love to that cookie dough as she was making it. And um, so she went home and she told me that, she made love to her cookies and they rose. <laughs> it was the same exact recipe. <laughs> so I am a firm believer in um, making magical, making magic cookies. <laughs> they, your food does absorb your energy, your intentions, and it makes a difference. Flying broom. I can let go of my mistakes. Oh, I love it. Ooh, <laughs> I'm trying not to do that too loud by the camera. <laughs> I don't want to blow it out. My voice is heard in the world. Oh my gosh, this might be my favorite card. I might leave that over there. Happy Poppet, I am enough. All of these cards are so cute. Freeze it. I freeze what I no longer want. Hmm. Aqua Luna. I am grateful and blessed. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous too. I don't know if that's going to be my, I don't know. These are so pretty. Happy sleep pillow. 
I sleep well and have good dreams. I think this would be a good deck too for um, working with your inner child, comforting your inner child, telling your inner child things that you never got to hear when you were younger. Paper aeroplane. I am free to make my wishes come true. Wishing boat. I look forward to new challenges. That is cool. Candle magic. Every day, things get better. Magic eggs. Beginning, something is exciting. These are so cute. I keep saying that, but they are. Happy magic for pets. Animals are my friends. I am kind and loving to them. Shield of crystals. I am loved and protected. Adorable. Seeds of power. From tiny things, big things can grow. I love it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if those are going to be my favorite. I'm going to have to go through them all. Send a letter to the universe. The world loves me. Moon wishes. The moon shows me patience. Painting with magic. I don't have to know everything all the time. Wish upon a star. I am made from the stuff of stars. I matter. Oh, let's see. Okay, so these are all going to be in my favorite pile. There aren't that many cards in this deck, but I think I will have a rather large pile. So by this, for this pile, I think I'm just going to be going... Um, by the the art combined with the message because it's not a super long message on the card it's really cute Mm, I do like this card, but I don't think that's going to be my favorite. And this one is absolutely adorable, but it's not going to be my favorite because it's the, it's the image with the meaning. And I just really like these ones so much more. So it's not a too big of a pile. Let's see. So I'm doing this in a little bit of a backwards order for my usual, um, but this just kind of feels a little bit more organic to me today. <laughs> I don't know. I do have my list here and I guess I'll just go over the list after I do this. Okay. So we have one extra card. I'll just kind of go like this and fit it there in the middle. There we go. Okay. So oh, I guess there's room. Yeah. We'll just scooch these out a little bit. It is an actual word. Scooch. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yay. All right. 
So let's start eliminating which one is not going to be my favorite today. Hmm. I think I'm going to take out Wish Upon a Star. Actually, I'll just turn this over. And then I'll put these other cards here. Okay. So these are similar. Um, I'm going to see which one. Okay, so I feel like these two are similar, like they're sending their wishes out. Um, I do really like that bubble, um, the bubble pranayama and meditation I do with the kids, but I also kind of like these tentacle vibes that I'm getting. Maybe it's ribbon, I don't know, but I think I'm gonna put the bubble in here. So I like that one. Mm. I'm going to take out Seeds of Power. These two are similar for me. Hmm. I'm really torn between these two. Mm, I'm I'm torn between <laughs> these five. I'm gonna take out the wishing tree. So I, I I really like this card, but I think like, I like this one a little bit more. Let the leaves go. Between these two, I'm gonna have to take this one out. I did not expect the cookies to be in the final running and I guess these two ended up being here anyway. Um, Let's see if I move it this way, if I can <laughs> narrow it down. Um, okay, so if it's going to be based on image and the saying, the little snippet, I guess the cookies has to come out because these two are just so beautiful. And although I love the meaning and I do like this, like, symbology with the cookies there, it always reminds me of that conversation with my son's friend's sister about her cookies and how they finally rose. Mm. Maybe that is my favorite. Like these ones are beautiful, but maybe the big magic cookies is my favorite. Yeah, I think the cookies surprisingly um, is going to have to be my favorite. That's a shocker. Okay, so let's see what the guidebook says for card number 13, Bake Magic Cookies. You can put your happy wishes into the food you prepare. Making cookies is a fun way to do it. As you stir the ingredients of your favorite recipe together, think about things you have enjoyed and people or pets you like or love. Think of these good experiences and stir them in, saying these are magic cookies. I only put good magic inside. All who eat them will be blessed with good things. When the cookies are baked, decorate them especially well and share them. You can say whatever you want, as long as it's your good intentions, your good thoughts, your good vibes, whatever. And I, I like to sing and dance to them. And words are spells. So like, really think about what you're putting into the cookies. If Are you singing this sad, sad song about the true love of your life leaving, well, that's going to go into your cookies. Is that really what you want to be consuming? <laughs> um, is that going to be the magic you want to eat? So yeah, really think about it. Make a conscious decision what you're going to be singing to your cookies. 
make it intentional. But yes, I like to sing and dance to my cookies. Okay, so that's cute. Pretty basic. Let's just pick a random card. Let's see how this deck shuffles. So I'm just probably going to feel more comfortable doing an overhand shuffle just to kind of keep these cards as nice as possible. Let's just pick a random card. This one is Happy Magic for Pets. Animals are my friends. I am kind and loving to them. That's card 24. Let's see what that has to say. Animals are your friends, and if you were lucky enough to have a pet, you can give it good wishes and energy. Hold to your heart something of your pet, such as a blanket, collar, name tag, or toy. Close your eyes and think about your pet being happy and safe. Really feel this and imagine it in your mind. Clearly say, name of your pet is loved and protected. So it is. Give your pet their magic present. Yeah, so it's just like a little blessing that you're doing. Okay, so that's cute. Let me just try it just so you guys can hear what it sounds like and I'll tell you how it feels so that way. It actually doesn't feel bad. You know what I think it is? It's just that the card is a lot wider than a tarot card. I think this, if this was tarot size, I wouldn't be so hesitant to shuffle it in this way. But the thing that makes me just a little bit nervous is that edge. Um, I really don't want to be too rough with this deck because it's not laying entirely flat. I really don't have a name. Like I call the corners roundish, you know, because that's good enough. And I just consider like roundish to have its own classification. But I guess this edge, I guess I'm just going to call it kind of, kind of bumpy or textured. Um, it's not entirely smooth. So I think at some point with a lot of use, these may get some chipping. We have a little bit of lifting here from the cutting. So I would be willing to bet that the cards were face down and cut this way. For some reason, I kind of get the feeling that that rock pool just doesn't use the sharpest. Oh, there it is. It's really showing now. At least I think it is doesn't use the sharpest die cutter thing when um, when cutting their decks, at least on the ones that I tend to get. Let me know in the comments if you have a different experience with their decks. Like for a while, I was getting really good quality from Rockpool, and then um, like I used to be excited when I would open one, and then I started to dread opening them, even though I really liked the imagery. Let me see. I'm trying to get it to show the edge. And just get that textured look for you. I'm hoping this is picking up on camera. It's a little hard to show with this. But yeah, you can you can see it a little more on this side. It's not too bad. It's definitely not the worst. But it's definitely not the best either. So because that's something that's really standing out to me. I am trying to make sure that I show you that that's there, just so you make your own, your own decision. So let me go over my little checklist. So I went over the title and the artist, the author and the publisher. The packaging is nice. It does have a nice, attractive, sturdy box. I like the thumb holes. I will keep it in the box on my tarot shelf and it's not like so loose that it's gonna just like you're gonna pick it up and it's gonna fall and explode everywhere all over your floor. I do have an issue with butterfingers and sometimes I drop my decks. <laughs> so that's very nice. Um, the ease of opening was nice. The shrink wrap was a little tight, but that's fine. It kept all the dust out and kept it from the elements. I like the size of the box. It's not gonna take up too much room. Going into the guidebook, I feel it's appropriate for the amount of information. I really don't think that they needed to put like a really fancy schmancy guidebook in here for something that you're probably not going to use that often. I think once you kind of get the gist of it, you're really not going to be pulling this thing out anymore. And it's going to probably more than likely go at the bottom of the box. I would have appreciated if the cards were a little bit better, um, maybe a little thicker. I definitely would have appreciated 
like a matte or buttery finish on cardstock. Um, I love the edging. I love the gilding. The gilding's really nice. And I appreciate that the corners are more round. Okay, um, I would have loved a fully round corner, but that's okay. Oh, I gotta give it a sniff test. I forgot about the sniff test. Okay, so let's smell the book. It's a little stinky. Um, I really don't like the way this smells. <laughs> it doesn't smell good. Let's check to see if they have any spreads. No, no spreads, but they do give you a couple of suggestions like, let me see, the card of the day. Thinking about the four directions, pull four cards and place them in the positions of the four directions. Oh, but then it still tells you to pick one. The card that sits in the position of the direction you chose is your card for the day. Make a big circle and then pick one at random. Yeah, so it looks like it's like just meant to do like for a single card of the day, maybe to wrap up a tarot reading. I wouldn't really call them slippery. I would just say they're smooth. Fingerprints, because it is a very glossy cardstock. Um, it's not the glossiest cardstock. I do have some that are a little bit glossier. But I do want to say the fingerprints are not as bad as I thought they were going to be, especially with it being dark. I thought like immediately they were going to be covered in lots of fingerprints. I'm sure they will get them, but it's not as intense as I was expecting. So it probably has some sort of a coating on it. Let's check out the thumb from here. So yeah, there is a thumbprint for sure, but it's not as bad as I was expecting. Is that the, no, that's just the image. I thought that was my thumbprint. <laughs> I just held it right on the image. So that's not my thumbprint. The image kind of extends and fades into the border. Okay, so let's see if I can actually get a thumbprint on here. Mm, slightly. Yeah, they, these kind of hold up to thumbprints, surprisingly. I would not call it thumbprint proof, but I'd say it's kind of resistant. That's pretty surprising. Okay, interesting. Let's check the smell. Let's do a little sniff test on the cards. The cards almost have no smell at all, which is really surprising for how glossy they are and so much ink. Um, and then even like with this hollow foil, I was expecting the hollow foil to stink, but there's almost no smell at all. I think the font size is nice. It's really easy to read. The only thing that did not immediately jump out at me was that there was a number in this little star thing. I kind of thought that was just like decoration at first. And some of them, the contrast is a little bit difficult to see the star kind of blends in with the background on a few of the cards. For the most part, you can see it. I can still see that one, but it's not as stark as this. Yeah, I guess that would be the, the main card. And that's not like anything, like that's not, that doesn't bother me in any way. It's just, yeah, it's just on my list, you know, does anything blend in. Does it have a cohesive theme? So, um, kind of. I would say the art styles look a little different. Like these look like very different themes to me. I would say it's probably like two, two different themes, but whatever, maybe three. But it's fine, I like it. I think it's really cute. I think the art quality is nice. There's nothing really um, blurry or muted. You can tell that some of it is like photoshopped, but it's not overly done. Like sometimes it's just like, oh, why does it look so photoshoppy? Um, 
some I, I just I just can't wrap my head around why they had to be so photoshopped. This one, I feel like some are more photoshopped than others, but it doesn't bother me. This looks like a really soft and hazy. I guess that would be like the most, but that ended up being my favorite card. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> it doesn't bother me, which really surprised me, but I think it's more like the meaning behind it. If I didn't have that connection to baking cookies and that story with my son's friend's sister, that probably would not be my favorite card. It would have been one of the other ones. Let me see. Is this for newbies? Yeah, definitely. I even think this would be a suitable deck for, um, for kids. It's definitely not something that I would limit to only using with children. I, I would use this myself. Who might like it? Okay. I think lots of people would like this. I think if you're into fantasy, if you're into like wishing on a star, making birthday wishes, um, even if you're not like into magic per se, I think it kind of breaks it down like to as simple as manifesting. Um, this is like setting intentions. This is positive thinking. This is good vibes. This is blessings. You know, um, I think it breaks it down to like, it's just energy. I think this kind of makes it safe and approachable. I think it's good for young people. I think it's good for people who want really positive and uplifting messages, something that's not going to be dark and scary. It still challenges you to let stuff go, that it's safe to let go of what you no longer need. That sometimes sounds so much easier said than done. Um, and it does it in a way that's not scary. Who might not like it? People who don't really want another super happy and bright deck. They just might not want something that's just so happy, I guess. I do like that it shows kids of different different ethnicities in the deck. I think that's pretty cool. There are no older people in this deck, so it's just cutesy little things and kids. That's why I kind of feel like it kind of is like an inner child deck for me. Let's do a two card reading. Okay. Um, like what is holding me back from my wishes coming true? And how can I overcome that obstacle? So this is just going to be a sample reading for nobody in particular, but if it resonates, then by all means, feel free to take that into consideration. So let's see. This holding me back and how do we overcome that? Okay, so we got card 20 and 23. Paper airplane. And magic eggs. What is holding me back from my wishes coming true? I am free to make my wishes come true. Let's see what the guidebook has to say about that. Card 20. So we're going to try to use this as more than one card. So let's see. Decorate a piece of paper with any drawing you'd like using symbols and more realistic artwork. Fold the paper into a paper airplane. If you don't know how to do that, look on the internet or get an adult to help you. Find somewhere with a good breeze to launch your plane. As you throw the plane into the air, say, element of fire, lift my wishes to the universe and make them come true. So what is blocking me? I would say just like launching, um, really believing that your dreams, your wishes have the wings to take flight. I feel like this would be doubt. Doubt and fear. And then how can I overcome this doubt or fear? Magic eggs. Beginning something is exciting. Let's see, 23. Carefully paint a fresh egg with one hopeful wish or many, making it as beautiful as you can. When the painting is done, dig a small hole in the garden or in a pot with soil and crack open the egg, saying, I release my new wish to the world to grow. Place the shell in the hole too. If you like, you can also plant a seed in that place. How do I overcome it? 
by literally planting the seed, by taking that first step, by daring to put something beautiful into the world. And here it's a, it's, it has an airplane, like you literally have to release it, you know, and here, what that's what you're doing. You're releasing it. I release my new wish into the world to grow. And I feel like nurturing it, you know, how it says you can plant a seed in that place. I like to do that with letters. So then you plant the seed and then you're nurturing the plant, or it could even be a potted plant that's already germinated and growing. And then you're nurturing it. You're giving that plant the love and the attention and the care, conscious daily reminder to also nurture your intention, your wish, your dream. So that's pretty cool. I probably won't use this deck as a standalone deck. I'll probably end up just using this deck to tie up a tarot reading or as an additional oracle card in another oracle reading, probably mainly dealing with making dreams come true, manifesting, things of that nature. Yeah, I think that just about wraps it up. If there is a deck that you would like me to review, please leave a comment below letting me know which deck that is, and I will try to get my hands on it. Thank you for hanging out with me today, and please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon, Gems. Bye!